So how do we pronounce it again? Secant, <clears throat> and how do we find it? One over the cosine, good. So let's just say, for example, because we're going to go around the unit circle here in a second. If I wanted to find, say, the secant at pi over six or of pi over six, I don't know the secant. And I will tell you as a guy, I'll, I'll probably get freshened up here in the next week or two. But like, if you ask me secant of pi over six, I don't know what it is. What my brain does is what I expect your brain to do. And that is to take the cosine of pi over six and flip it. So we know that the cosine of pi over six is what? Root three over two. Remember that pi over six is on the 30 degrees. It's way over on the far right. So it's a long cosine to get there. Short sign up, but that's not what we're talking about here. And so then if I do one over something, I don't know if you knew this trick or not, but the trick to divide one by a fraction is just really to flip the fraction over. So the answer is two over the square root of three. But we know that that's not acceptable, right? Because there's a root on the bottom. So what do we do to fix it? We multiply the top and the bottom both by root three. And what is our final answer? The first secant that we can put on our unit circle. It is two root three over three. Now I'm gonna say something and you're gonna tell me if it doesn't make sense. I'm not asking, I'm telling you, you are going to speak up if this does not make sense. I'm gonna go back to the unit circle now. And I am going to, it, it, this unit circle becomes quite a cluttered mess. And so you eventually you're going to probably want to remake it um, once you figure out how, like how much stuff is actually on it. So I can go right here to this angle and I can say that the secant at that angle is two root three over three. So this is the part I was worried about. And you're going to tell me if you don't like this. That same secant ratio occurs three more times. That secant ratio is built by a long cosine and a short sine, right? Where again, three more times does the relationship of long cosine, short sine happen? Five pi over six. There's another one over here at five pi over six. So if I go over here to pi over six, that's a match. And yes, Layla, if I go down here to seven pi over six, that's another match. And what's the last one? At 11 pi over six, look at all of those spots on the unit circle are identical in ratio and proportion, right? So if I had to go through and do one over cosine, that's something I shouldn't have to do every time. I already know it's two root three over three. Mm -hmm. What's going to change when I head over to the 5 pi over 6? It's going to be a negative. Because it's 1 divided by a negative cosine. And a positive divided by a negative is a negative. So my secant over here at 5 pi over 6 is negative 2 root 3. Let's head down to the south, down to seven pi over six. That's this guy. I'll make him Mr. Purple down here, Mr. Purple. What is his secant going to be? You think it's going to be positive? What is secant? Oh, it's not, it would still be negative, right? Because secant is one divided by. Yes, and secant is not built from a sine and a cosine. Secant is just the reciprocal of cosine. And we know that down here in quadrant three, cosine is negative. So the secant stays negative down here. So we can say that the secant down here is still negative two root three over three. And then let's head all the way across to the right, down over there to 11 pi over 6. What's his secant going to be? Good. <clears throat> We're back to it being positive because the cosine is positive. Hey, as the cosine goes, so too will the secant go. Right.
They're like bedmates. Let's take a look at uh, like a mid quadrantal angle. So let me go back over to my other page and let's calculate. And again, we should only have to do this one time. Let's calculate one time by hand the secant at phi over four. How do you find a secant? One, mm -hmm. one over the cosine. In other words, you just flip the cosine. So what is the cosine at pi over four? Three. Three. And if I flip that, and I get two over root two. You have the <clears throat> comfortable size of the two root two over two, which would x bar two root two. So we now have a new addition to our bank of numbers that we're going to see a lot of, root two. So I can head back over to my unit circle now. And in my first mid-quadrantal angle at 45 degrees pi over 4, I can now say that I know a secant. I can now say that right here, the secant is root 2. And again, as the cosine goes, so too will the secant go. Cosine and secant will follow each other positive, negative. So let's head across to the next mid-quadrantal angle over here, 3 pi over 4. What's his secant? Yes. Now, you fell for this the first time, but you're not going to make the same mistake again. We're going to head down into quadrant 3, down here, to 5 pi over 4. What's his secant? Negative root 2. Unlike tangent, this one doesn't alternate positive, negative, positive, negative. This one goes positive, negative, negative, positive, just like cosine does. Just like mm -hmm. right. And then finally, let's get down here to the lower right hand to 7 pi over 4. What is his secant? Good job. And there's only really one major thing left to discuss, and then we'll get to the quadrantals, and that is the uh, pi over three. So let's find the secant at pi over three. What is secant? One. It's one over the cosine. <clears throat> so it's one over one half. Because remember, you got a shorty cosine at pi over three. And what's one over one half? Two over, one. two over one, which is just two. That's nice. So th there's a sweet spot for us. So if we go to that uppy high angle, the, the ones um, kind of closer to the y-axis there, then we have a nice secant of two. That's lovely. So let's head up here to the top. I'll circle him in red. His name is pi over three, and his secant value is two. Still good? Okay. Let's head across to his homie on the other side, and that's 2 pi over 3. I'll keep him in red right here. Whoop. What's his secant? Nice. Let's head down to the lower left, quadrant 3. Um, and remember, we're hugging the... We're doing the tall triangles here. We're hugging that y-axis, so we're right here. What's his secant? <clears throat> and then finally, we get back to quadrant uh, four, where cosine is positive. And if cosine is positive, secant is positive. And what's our secant here? Good. So you should now have secant values on your unit circle for all 12 of the inside the quadrant angles, which of course leaves the quadrantals 0, 90, 180, 270, so on and so forth. Let's talk about those. So secant is just the reciprocal of cosine, right? That's easy enough. So let's head over here. What is the secant at zero? It's one divided by the cosine. Brady, I agree. And the cosine is one, and one divided by one is one. So we can say that the secant at the far right edge of the unit circle 
is one. Let's head up to the north side. Secant at pi over two. Secant is one divided by the cosine. What's the cosine at the North Pole? Zero. What's one divided by zero? Undefined. undefined. So we can say that the secant at the North Pole is undefined. Which means if you're a really good math listener, you know now that that means that the graph of secant of X is going to have, does anyone remember what that A word is? The A word, those lines that the graph... <laughs> Asymptote. So as soon did you say atrium? I said atrium. Atrium. You want me to spell it for you? Yeah, I wrote that nice and spread out as neat as I could. Asymptote. There are slant asymptotes that you'll see this year. There are vertical asymptotes and there are horizontal asymptotes. They're wondrous little creatures. Here's the graph of, um, we're doing secant right now, right? Here's the graph of secant of X. And you can see it also has asymptotes. So, and how convenient that I have an asymptote place. And that makes sense because the secant and tangent asymptotes are in the same place. Um, but there you see, there's those lines where the graph can't get to. So those are your vertical asymptotes. <clears throat> yeah. All right, let's get back to it. Uh, how, did we finish secant? We're still cooking around? We're, we're on the, okay, let's head over to the west side. Over here, what is the secant? Right, one divided by cosine, one divided by negative one is negative one. So the secant over here is negative one. And then let's head to the south pole. Undefined. Secant will be undefined down here. If your cosine value is zero, any function that is divided by cosine, it's got to be undefined because you can't divide by zero. So secant is undefined down there at the bottom. Good? Still good? You good? Mm -hmm. Yep, I know it's going to be a rough, <laughs> rough go here. <clears throat> All right, let's head to the next guy who is cosecant. Does anyone want to guess what cosecant is? It's one divided by sine. I, I pleaded my case with the math gods when I was young and thought, why would they do this to me? Like, why? If I have any shot of memorizing this, it's that secant starting with S should go with sine, but it doesn't. And cosecant should go with cosine no they're backwards so sine is one over or secant is one over cosine cosecant is one over sine which is just having said that you can memorize it as they're backwards then done boom so cosecant is one over the sine so let's get started with our first angle that we encounter let's do cosecant at pi over six by the way these are just going to be the secant values in different positions. Shh, don't tell anybody. Because the triangles are changing places. Just saying. So if it's one over the sine, what's the sine at pi over six? One half. And what's one divided by one half? Done. Which I think is kind of cool, because if you remember when we were doing, um, I don't remember which page I wrote it on, but okay, apparently I, I failed here. Do you remember how we got secant values of two at those four spots? You have that on your unit circle, right? Now for cosecant, the twos are going to jump down and be the lower guys. Cool, huh? Yeah. Let me clear up. Did I lose you? Yes. So up here, the secant was two, but I'm switching colors now. Down here, the cosecant is two. What I'm trying to say to you in my clumsy way is that the secant and the cosecant just switch places. 
if you know one, you can just transpose it to the other. Well, then instead of the negatives, you know, this way. This is yes. Positive. You nailed it. I'm going to destroy this red because you already have this on your unit circle. Let's head up here while we're thinking of it. What was our secant value for the downloads? Two root three over three. So you want to guess what cosecant is up there? Nailed it. Now let's head across to quadrant number two. Now bear in mind that this one is based off of sine. And here, let me give you a little visual aid. Anywhere up here, sine is positive, right? So if the sine is positive, then the cosecant has to be positive. So Brady already nailed it. He said the the secant is divvied left, right. The cosecant is divvied up, low, high, low. Nice observation. Can I go? Can I get rid of my vandalism? What will the cosecant be up there? Two pi over three. Yes. And what will the cosecant be down here? It's based off of sine. If sine is positive, cosecant will be positive also. Sine is positive anywhere above the x-axis. So, yeah. And now we head down to quadrants three and four. And after this, the only one we'll have to add is the cotangent. And I got good news for you. Do you want to guess what the cotangent is? Okay. It's the upside down of the tangent. Mm -hmm. So we already have tangents. We just flip them over. Boop, 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 and we'll be done. And then will you, will you print off some of these and those? Oh, yeah. 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 It's a, getting a little sloppy. This is draft number one. Draft number one. We're good. Let's head to right. Uh, I think we're here. Whoop. What is the cosecant at that angle right there? Say it again. Good job. Negative two. What is the cosecant at this purple angle down here? Yes. Which leaves us then with quadrant four. And I'll just keep switching colors here. How about Greeny down there? What's his cosecant? He is negative two root three over three. And then finally, I am I'm out of usable colors. I could try yellow, but look, you probably can't see that very well. Negative. <laughs> I'll try it. What's the cosecant? Negative. A little hard to see. Okay, I need I need better colors. Uh, this is a I got numbers and words everywhere. I don't even know what Have we done our mid quadrantals for the cosecant yet? No. Okay. Top, bottom, on the bottom. No, it's side, side, it's on the side. Except I'm not talking about the quadrantals. I'm talking about the mid quadrantals. Have we done, let me just erase this whole thing here. Have we done cosecant for that angle? No. Okay, so again, what is cosecant? One over the cosine. Um, the cosecant is one over the sine, which in this case is one over, yes, I know, I agree, except the sine's change. So the cosecant is one over the sine. The sine there is root two over two. When we flip that over, we get two over root two, two root two over two, which is just root two. So the cosecant is root two. Again, Brady is really on top of this whole sign. Brady is embracing the signs. Uh, remember that cosecant is based off of sine. And as we travel in quadrants one and two, our sign, just put that anywhere, our sign is positive, right? So our cosecant will also stay positive. So let's head over here to purple. What's his cosecant? It's just root two. Because the sine is still positive in quadrant two. 
Well, I can't really answer that question. But sometimes that's what you got to do. That's what happens sometimes, right? Let's head down here. What's the cosecant? Negative root two. And then over here, what's the cosecant? Negative. There's a negative there. It just got blended in. Which leads us to quadrantal angles, 0, 90, 180, 270, 680. So let's... Let's hit those. Right here. Pow. What is his cosecant? Cosecant is one divided by sine. Sine at that point is zero. Therefore, cosecant at zero is undefined. You're like, wait, did the undefined change places? Yep. They shifted by 90 degrees. Let's head up to the North Pole. Up here. What is the cosecant up here? One. Because it's one divided by the sine. One divided by one is one. What is the cosecant over here? Good. Undefined. And then finally, let's head to the South Pole. Down here, what is the cosecant? Negative one. This has been quite a journey. There have been five trig functions discussed so far, sine, cosine, tangent, and then today, secant, cosecant, that makes five. And we have filled in 16 angles for each. Five times 60 is 80. I imagine your unit circle is a flipping mess. And there are going to be 16 more that we're going to add right now for a grand total of 96 answers on your unit circle. This will be it for today. We're done. And then tomorrow I start quizzing you on cosecant of pi over six, secant of two pi over three, stuff like that. Is what? No. no, you should already kind of have those probably filled in, but you could fill that in maybe after we're done with cotangent. Positive and negatives are, let's talk. Well, let's finish cotangent first. What did you say? Because it's awesome. I, we've already had this conversation, you and I. <laughs> What's cotangent? It is. No, it's one over tangent. You can also think of it as cosine over sine. Do you remember how tangent was sine over cosine? Cotangent's just the inverse of that. So, right. But an easier way to think about it is just take all your tangents and flip them over. That's how tangent and cotangent roll. They're just flippy doos, whoop, 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 back and forth. So let's start with cotangent of pi over six. You bet. Yeah, here, let me erase something. No, I'll just slow down. I'll pour some coffee while you guys ponder this. Is that good? How are we going to find our cotangents? Thank you. You were clearly listening. Good job. We're going to flip the tangents over. And do we already have the tangents on our unit circle? Yes. And you want some really good news? No, I, you don't have to answer that because I know you do. Um, check this out. Do you remember on Thursday how we learned that up here at the tall angles, we had a nice tangent. Stay with me, Blair. Do you remember what how we had a nice tangent up, top, up, up high and down low? Do you guys remember what the tangent is up here? Yes, that's the nice one, right? And then do you remember the tangent down here at the low one? You ready for this? Flip up. Yeah. So if we know that the tangents are those two guys, the cotangents are just going to go whoop and switch places. So having said that, what do you think is the, I should have erased all of this. What is the cotangent up here at pi over three? Yes. 
And what's the tangent down here at pi over six? Amazing. And the signs will stay the same as they did for tangent because we're building our ratio still out of sine and cosine. It just happens to be upside down. <laughs> it becomes a bit of a puzzle. So you got to remember with tangent, the good guys are high and low. And the bad guys are on the side. With cotangent, the good guys are on the side and the bad guys are high and low. I don't know if this would help anybody other than me, but here, because I'm going to draw you a pretty picture. It's going to be so pretty. If I were Donald Trump, I would say it's the prettiest picture. No one's ever drawn a prettier picture. Isn't that something he would say? Right. I can't do like an impersonation. I wish I could because I would. But this, I can't. You heard it? So look at this box. Whenever you hear me talking about the tall angles, I'm talking about the the corners of that box. Do you see how they're like taller than they are wide? So those are certain types of angles. But then we also have this box. And these ones are the shorty angles. You see? Does that help a little bit? What the heck? Why not? Why did you? They're rectangles. Yeah. What did I say? Are you bagging on my drawing? It's fine. You do what you need to do. If that, if you want to bring me down to make yourself feel bigger, that's fine. Oh, I was just trying to make a point. Well, thank you. You'll come to, that'll be the only saving grace you have. Once I take your safety net away, your unit circle and paper away, your only safety net is going to be that you've got the tall angles and memorize your tangent and cotangent there. And then your long side angles, memorize your tangent and cotangent there. And really all you got to do is memorize one because then the other ones just switch, switch. Let's finish this off. Let's head over here. Oop. What angle is that? That is 2 pi over 3. And what is the cotangent of that angle? It is negative root 3 over 3. Top notch. It, it's negative because we're in quadrant 2. And it's the one that used to be down low, but it's up high because we flipped. And let's head down here to this guy. What's his cotangent? Negative root 3. Let's head over to this guy. Whoop. What's his cotangent? It is positive and it is root three. Let's do this purple one down here. Whoop. What's his cotangent? And then let's head down to quadrant four. Right here. Whoop. What's his cotangent? And then finally cotangent right here. Negative root three. Good news. Your mid quadrantal angles will stay the same as tangent because you're dividing something by itself and the signs will all stay the same. So having said that, if I go right here, I'll use green for this. I hope you can see my green right there. What's the cotangent? It is one. Because cosine and sine divide each other, but they're the same. And I can say the same thing is going to keep happening when I find my other quadrantal, mid-quadrantal angles right here. 3 pi over 4, except it goes negative because cosine's negative and sine's positive. And you divide a negative by a positive, you get a negative. So over there, cotangent is negative 1. Quadrant 3, whoop, right there, cotangent is 1. And right here, whoop, what was that noise? Yes. Let's make this official. We made it. We just have to do the quadrantals now for cotangent because I don't think we did it yet. Let's do this. Here we go. Uh, negative one. I'm erasing a lot. Well, look at this trick. Um, right here. 
cotangent undefined. All cosine, one divided by zero. Let's head up to the North Pole. What is cotangent up here? Right, it's cosine divided by sine, which is zero divided by one, which is zero. So the cotangent up there is zero. Over to the West End, cotangent is undefined because you're trying to divide a negative one cosine by a zero sine, no bueno. If you had a calculator, by the way, I got to get those calculators checked out to you guys. Um, if you typed in cotangent of like pi, it'll say undefined, I can know. Or cotangent of 180, same thing. Finally, thank goodness we made it. I cannot believe it. Down here at the bottom, what's the cotangent? I moved them because people were starting to think that they were rentals during like algebra class. And I was like, eh, that's not going to work. So they're, they're high. Are you good? Is your brain mush? You are not supposed to memorize all of it. You're supposed to memorize certain aspects of it. Like right now, ready? Watch this. Sine of pi over three. That's root three over two. And like that has to be quick. Your brain has to immediately draw a picture of, of pi over three and say tall triangle, root three over two, quadrant one. If you can memorize that. So like when I give you a quiz, like a, like a timed no notes quiz, not if, when, if I ask you for sine of pi over six, that is immediate. But if I ask you for like cosecant of pi over six, that takes more time. The ones you have to memorize are the sines and cosines. Sorry. But then you can build all the others off of that. So like on a quiz, you get some of them really, really fast. And some of them you're like, oh, I got to you know, flip. So don't try to memorize all 96. You'll go crazy. Unless you're like rain man or something. Are you ready? Aiden, ready? Cosine of 2 pi over 3. Pi over three, whoop, two pi over three, whoop. That is a short cosine in the negative direction. Okay, see my elbow is not doing you any good here. Negative one half. We begin practicing tomorrow. Now you know all 96 values. Lauren, you ready? Sine of pi over four. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Just, uh, you like the we got our cheated. Have a good rest of the day. I got to get to editing my video. What was the answer? What math?